So, think about some big problems this planet is facing. Think about access to food. Or think about another big problem, the access to clean water for everyone on this planet. Or think about another big problem that we are facing here, the urban growth that can cause slums and inequalities in most of the cities. Well, if someone in this audience is thinking about solving or even addressing or challenging these problems through some extreme, innovative ways, well, maybe among you there are some utopian thinkers or people that think about utopia. No offense intended. What is utopia? So, utopia is a word that comes from a Greek word, topos, that means place, and the prefix that means no. So, utopia is a no place or a place that doesn't exist yet. And since the moment that this word came into the common language, other words have been created using topos and referring to utopia, like utopia, that means nice place, or dystopia, that means a bad place. And so if you have to choose where to go for a weekend, I suggest you go to the utopia. <laughs> so this word was coined by this Englishman, a man of the Church of England, in 1516, so 501 year ago. And utopia was the name of an island that was part of a book that Thomas Moore wrote several years ago. So the title of the book was very long. Libellus vere aureus nec minus salutaris quam festivus de optimo republica statu de que nuova insula utopia. That means basically concerning the best state of commonwealth or republic and the new of the new island utopia, a truly golden handbook, no less beneficial than entertaining. So the book was, has a long title, but actually it got a review in it. So he didn't have to go to Amazon book to, you know, get some good reviews. So Thomas Moore lived under the King Henry VIII, not an easy guy actually, so who made him a knight, and then, a few years later, order his execution because he didn't give the oath for, to, for every the eight to become the king of the Church of England. And he wrote this book in Latin, and it was uh, published in 1516 in other places than in England. And the book was translated in English 35 years, the first edition, and 16 years after that Thomas More died executed by Henry VIII. What he provided was a social dreaming. Let's go one century after Thomas More. There were new reasons for utopia. The new world was discovered, but Europe was like this. A lot of small states um, that were ruled by authorities, very severe religious or secular authorities, small states in continuing transformations because of the war, 74 millions of inhabitants in Europe, so a crowded continent. And now look at the other side of the ocean, of the Atlantic Ocean. French colonies, British colonies, 800,000 inhabitants at the same time when Europe had 74 million. A lot of uh, empty space where to test, experiment, where to move people in utopian communities, in new communities, in new societies on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. The reason to leave Europe between 
the 17th century and the 19th century were more. There were, there were a lot of reasons to leave this. One was the industrial cities produced new health issues. There were religious and political reasons to leave Europe. Poverty, inequalities in cities were another reason. And of course, wars that happened in every place in Europe. So look at this series of map. And if you can start from the right, left, <laughs> top left, you will see a series of communities that had been created, follow the red lines, the, the red arrows. You see a lot of new communities that have been created, that have been generated in between the end of the 17th century and the half of the 19th century. I have also um, located Cincinnati with a very small red circle. And you can see in some of these maps that there were a lot of experiments around Cincinnati. So let me show you this map. This was a, a utopian city called Hygieia. Hygieia is a Greek word for um, health. So this was the city of health. Do you recognize something familiar on the bottom of the slide? Can you read something that is familiar? River Ohio. And in fact, Hygieia was supposed to be just 15 minutes from here in Ludlow, Kentucky. So just on the other side of the river, you can recognize actually some part of uh, Cincinnati. So in the year after, architects and planners started to design their own utopia. Let me introduce you Ebenezer Howard. At the end of the 19th century, he created, he generated this idea of garden cities. And he built one or two of these garden cities. You can see on the right of the screen, latchwork that was one. So, and he advocated for a connection between the built environment and the natural environment. He was looking for an harmony between these two landscapes, between these two environments, to provide a new way to live for the people in England at that time. And you can see some of this um, example in a city that is close to here, Marymount, not just because of the architecture, but also because of the plan. Let's go to another utopian thinker. You probably have recognized Frank Lloyd Wright, the architect of the Falling Water House in Pennsylvania. So Frank Lloyd Wright designed his utopia city. It was called Broad Acre City. And again, he was looking for the harmony between the built environment and the natural environment, a sort of harmony between men or human beings and nature. But he was in the machine age, so-called machine age. And I have highlighted some of the sentences that he wrote in the manifesto that was uh, connected with uh, the physical plan of Broad Acre City. And he said, no traffic problem, no railroads, no street cars, so basically no public transport, just private cars. He said, an acre of ground minimum for each individual. So a very uh, less dense uh, uh, place than some of the places that we know. But you can actually see that some of these principles are in our suburbs. So we cannot blame Frank Lloyd Wright for the suburbs, but I mean, he gave his uh, contribution to that, I would say. Let's go to another one of the most extreme utopian thinker, Paolo Soleri. He was an Italian architect. He was educated in Torino, and then he came here in the United States and he spent all his life in Arizona. And he was the most extreme because he designed cities like this. 
a city for 900,000 inhabitants. Actually, he designed cities or buildings, very large buildings for two millions of inhabitants. He was very radical. He was very extreme. And he actually tried to build two cities. And he was uh, quite successful in that. Arcosanti was a city that he started to build in the middle of Sonora Desert. He didn't succeed completely, but at least, I mean, he started to build his own utopia city. So, and if you're thinking that all the utopian thinkers that I have presented to you at a very fast pace are detached from our daily life and they are remote in time, well, let me introduce you another utopian thinker. Please meet Orville Simpson. He lived here, 15 minutes from here, in Hyde Park. This is a picture of Orville, Orville Simpson that appeared on the Life magazine in September 1967. So, Orville Simpson, that was not educated as an architect or a planner, he designed, drawn, and created rules and regulations for a city that he called Victory City. He made by ends hundreds of maps that now are conserved at the University of Cincinnati. So now I think you can legitimately ask me, so but this utopian had been never realized in some way? And the short answer is no. The long answer is yes. <laughs> because ideas have been transformed in many other things. And so this utopian thinker, that think in a way that was completely different from other people, so they move laterally in order to go further. They jumped. They didn't accept that the only solutions were one or zero. They were looking something in between those and something over those numbers. So utopia is an important component of our common future. And I advocate for that. We need utopian thinker. We need utopian thinker that challenge the way we live in our cities, that challenge the big problems that we are facing on our planet, which is actually the only planet that we have. I really do believe in this. Thank you.